You know, when we're playing guitar, sometimes we feel like we're up against the wall and we have run out of ideas or physical limitations uh, to play what we want to play. And, um, you know, it, it's disheartening sometimes. And so this lesson here is to show you how you can feel and know that you are getting better at guitar. Uh, we're going to take a very simple song and we're going to use some key moments to bring out the musician inside of you and show you how easy it really is. And uh, like Again, just some simple ingredients. The most important thing is learning when to do this stuff is what is going to teach you um, how good you really are. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, go get it. Simple. Follow along. You'll be better in no time. All right. How, how do you get better at guitar? How do you feel like you're getting better at guitar? You, you, we all spend hours and hours and hours behind this thing, and, it, and it's, it's hard to tell like how far we have come. And so this lesson is all about showing you. Uh, that you have come for or you can come for in a very short amount of time uh, and that music and guitar is much more simpler, sim yeah, simple than um, a lot of people make it out to be. It's, it's simple. Take a breath. I'm going to show you, hopefully keep you enthused throughout this lesson and just show you what you can do to start sounding better, feeling better and expanding that enthusiasm and the ideas on guitar and music. Okay, so what am I talking about? What is this crazy guy with a bandana and a very bright background talking about? Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about first the, mu the master music formula, okay? Um, music equals the scales and or chords happening over chords plus the human element. And I told you when I launched this formula that this is how music works. And the more you stare at it, the more you know amazing this is. I really do believe it's the E equals MC squared of, of music. And so when, when we're playing, we have to be very conscious of all three of these ingredients. And a great way to do it is to pick a very simple song. The song I picked is uh, Stand By Me, which I forgot the lyrics to when I was practicing this. But anyway, the lyrics. Uh, okay, so it's G O when the night has come. Walk into an E minor, right? And the land is C and the moon. D is the only G. Now this is not in the original key, but this is the, the chord progression you use. No, no, Be afraid. So you might have you know I won't be afraid. See just as long. And this is how you know how you get better. You don't have to sing. Don't worry. Don't turn this off. We want to listen. We want to listen and take advantage of when the singing stops. Okay? This is very important. Sorry, my phone just went off. Um, this is the most important thing, is when the singing stops, A, realizing that that melody is no longer there. And the only thing we have now is just the chord progression. And when we do that, when we just play, the end the moonlight, you know, it is the only light we see. It's kind of like... Right? There's nothing there except for the chord, and you're just waiting for the vocals to come back in. But you are a musician sitting behind this guitar. You're in charge of it. And music makes sense when you look at this formula. And when that vocal goes away, which consists of scales and chord tones, you have to jump in with uh, scales and chord tones. That's what you have to do. And that's what this lesson is about, is realizing that when you have the impulse to keep the music alive in that equation, keep the chords and keep the melody going, you have to jump in uh, or decide not to jump in. Of course, we'll talk about that, uh, but with the right elements and do it exactly at the moment you want to do it. That's how you know you get better. Because trust me, there are times when all of us go like, oh, I, I want to put something in and I have no idea what it is. So I'm just going to keep on just playing the chord or like, what do I do here? And that's how we say to ourselves, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not that good or I'm a novice because like we have these gaps in what we do. But the more you study the gaps, the more you, you realize you have stuff to do and you can do it, you know what to study. So let me show you, okay? Um, you know, the song, G, let's, let's take that very last line. Um, and the moonlight is the only light you'll see at the end of the first verse where, you know, uh, where is it? Then the C, the moonlight. There is eight beats of, of, of 
the top line silence of, of that formula, or there's no frosting on the cupcake, however you want to do it, for eight beats. So what do we do here? Well, we have a G, very simple. Let's zoom in. Boom, we have a G chord. We don't need to care what key we're in right now because we have a G chord happening. And so G chord tones, let's just talk about that first. If you know your cage chord system, stuff popping up here, or, or if you know just several cage chord pieces, of, let's see, I have a G chord here, 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 and in here, and I can do a little pieces of them, of whatever, whatever you know. I'm sure you know one or two or three G chord pieces. That's all you need. And let's start by throwing that in. Now, these, this is called arpeggiation or chord, uh, chord tones. You know, if you strum, it's chord, you're putting chord in, but if you arpeggiate, those are still chord tones, but I'm just individually plucking them. Let me, let me move my guitar over here. All right, so let's look for that first, all right? Now, the idea here is how do we know we're getting better? Well, we realize the music has stopped. We now have to step up to the game. Not the music, the melody is stuck, excuse me. We have to step up to the game now, to the plate, right? And and now it's like, okay, I'm not gonna choke. I know what to do, I'm gonna fill it with G chord tones, I'm gonna do it as tastefully as possible, and also, I'm gonna do it with the ingredients I know. All right, so here we go. So, and, um in and people go, ooh, I was tasty. And you go, I know, I know it was tasty because I learned that, you know, you put the chord tones on top of the chord, right? You put the frosting on top of the cupcake. And so the idea here is you know how that you're getting better when you have your ideas at these very precise moments in the now and you can do what you want to do. The other option we have here is pentatonics. Now, I'm gonna take that same G pause, right? And we can play G major, it's a G major chord, so G major pentatonic, right? Any G major pentatonic you know. Any which one, like any anyone you've studied. All that stuff's gonna be popping up, I think, over here, um, in case you wanna know it, but let's see what it sounds like with pentatonics. Now, if I choose a low pentatonic, it's gonna sound like bass liney. If I choose a higher pentatonic, meaning thinner strings or upper register, it's gonna sound a little bit more melodic. So, you know, I'm gonna think about it. When it happens, what do I want? And here we go. Again, you know, if you have another person playing with you, that I would decide to go higher because I'd have the chords going. But if it's by yourself, you know, maybe stay low. And and the more you work on this, the more you start to go, oh, okay, I, I can predict what I want. If I had another guitar player here, I'd be totally comfortable coming up to the G major pentatonic in the higher register. You heard that when I did it, the chords dropped out, right? And so, like, you don't want that stuff dropping out. Um, and so you got to think. So maybe next time I'll kind of stick to the pentatonic here that keeps the motion going. And... That makes sense now. And so you want to try everything possible in your arsenal on that on that moment of the G uh, to throw in G chord tones or G pentatonics and listen. And now it's like, okay, now that you understand the idea, we're about nine minutes into this video, now that you understand the idea, what you want to try doing is taking a song like this and throwing as much in as possible. Uh, to practice, not to execute, okay? So like, you want to use your judgment. That's the human element right there, is when do I do it and what do I do it with? We're keeping that equation balanced. We're gonna have the chords, we're gonna have the melody, but now that human element is, well, what am I comfortable doing? What does the song call for? What does the moment call for? Can I do it, right? And that's, that's you as a musician starting to come out. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is show you, I'm going to take advantage now of a lot of the pauses. Now it's going to sound very busy, but like I said, when you practice this, you want to practice in overdrive if you can. So during any G pause, I'm going to use either G major pentatonic or G major chord tones or arpeggios. 
if there's a pause in the E minor, I'll use E minor pentatonics or E minor chords. All right, you can learn all this stuff, like I said, in my Cage Primer playlist. It's on the C, C chord tones or C pentatonics. And for the D, D chord tones or D pentatonics. And throw in as much as I can because I want to see how well I can hear that pause and throw in these ingredients. And that's how I know I'm getting better because you have to see those ingredients and you have to go, okay, I can do it. So when practicing, go slow, but see how much you can throw in. So when the night has come and the night is done and the moon is the young I will see No, I won't be afraid No, I won't be afraid Because it's love We're using the musical, sorry, we're using the vocal pauses to continue our guitar playing and continue the melody and fill in the spaces that are pleasing to the ears. Now, and now what we're doing is we're thinking. We are thinking about music. We're thinking about guitar. And I'm using just chord tones or pentatonics of the chord I am on. Now, I'll do it with another, I'll do another example with um, a very, very, very famous song. I'm not going to mention the name because of copyright issues, but you'll get what the chorus is. And so the chorus of the song is, um, to think about it, oh yeah, so G, D, uh, E minor, and F sharp. All right, so that's one part of the chorus, all right? And I think you guys know what that song is. And so, you know, you can hear the vocals like, Pause on that D. Pause on that D minor. And a pause on that F sharp. You know, so on the D, you know, I'm here for the D, but if I want to use more ingredients, you know, I have a D chord here, I have a D chord uh, here. You know, I have D major pentatonics here, I have D major pentatonics here, and all the videos that you need will be popping up, you know, along uh, this lesson. I have D chord tones here, I have D chord tones here. You know, here, I, I see them all. This is the cage chord system. These are pentatonics. It's, it's whatever you know. That's the thing. It's whatever you know. And then once you learn what you know, you expand on it. And so, you know, on that D chord, I'm going to do something. On the E minor, I'm probably going to put in E minor chords, um, something, or E minor pentatonics, anything. Um, and then I'm going to, on the F sharp, you know, I'm going to put in F sharp chord tones. You know, just whatever I, uh, whatever I see fit. And uh, let's see what it sounds like. And this is what it's all about, making sure that you can have this impulse to fill the space with music, not just strum through it, and really, like, you know, develop your sense of musicianship. So here we go. Let's see what it sounds like. play the same part twice, which isn't what happens in that song. But you get the idea. Simple, simple, simple. The way you get better is by understanding you can put more in in different times. And so I know this is a fast lesson and it's probably like, whoa, 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 can you teach me those pentatonics and stuff? Well, on Patreon, you know, if it, we're going to be doing more songs, but on Patreon, if you want to join me, we're going to be practicing the stuff. I'll be showing you the pentatonics and chord tones available and kind of pushing our limits. But the idea here is that the music should never stop when the vocals stop. You want to be able to judge whether you want to put something in or whether you don't. And if you have the ability to do it. And, and that's what it's about right there. Do you have the ability to do it? Do you have the know-how? Can you hear it? And start simply and then keep on expanding your vocabulary with those fills because that's how music works. Uh, kind of a weird video, I think. But I think I got the point across. Let me know.